Hey everybody, James Jagger with Tactical Response. I uh, appreciate you watching. Um, I'm going to talk about the gunfire rules today. And some of this is tongue in cheek, some of it's fun or whatever. But the funny thing about it is, I originally put this list together about 15 years ago, and I've seen it passed around all over the place. And one of the and people kind of like started adding stuff to it. And one of them, one of the things I thought was funny is one of the ones that I'm not going to talk about it today. I'm not, it's not on my list, but one of the ones that was added that I thought was really funny was um, don't get into a gunfight. With, with a caliber that doesn't start with a four, well, you know, you know, I'm not a, one of these, uh, you know, FBI profilers, but I, I pretty much figured out who this guy is. First off, he's carrying a 40 caliber pistol, and uh, and I know that because if if not, it would have said get into, don't get into gunfight unless it's with a 45. So I, I know for a fact the guy carries a 40 caliber pistol. Uh, also, uh, this guy doesn't know much about guns apparently because I thought that a 308 or 30 out six or 50 cal Browning would be excellent rounds to get into a gunfight with, but apparently if it's not not, not a 40 cal round, it's not it's not going to work. Um, and another thing about people that carry a 40, and, and I'm sorry about this, but most of them have small penises. And and what I mean by that is that that's why people carry a 40 cal round. It's a compromise round, and who compromises? Guys with little dicks. And um, so. Uh, so they go, well, you know, it's it's bigger than a 9mm, but it holds more bullets than a 45, so I'm going to carry a 40. Uh, I'm not a fan of any high pressure rounds, 43, 57, SIG, 45 gap, any of them. It's, if a 9 or a 45 won't kill it, you'd really need a rifle. And um, so, sorry about that 40 caliber, guys. All right, um, here we go with gunfight rules. Again, some of them are tongue in cheek, so, so bear with me, but some of them are very serious. Rule one, bring a gun. Um, bring a gun. You, you have to have a gun. And I'll have guys want to enter discussions with me on what the best carry pistol is, and I'll say, what are you carrying? Well, I'm not carrying a gun, or I'm carrying some little pocket rocket, and not a, you know, not, not a 1911. And I'm like, well, if a 1911's the greatest gun, why aren't you carrying one? If a, if a SIG whatever, if a Glock whatever is the greatest gun, why aren't you carrying it? So don't enter a discussion with me about what's the best carry gun if you're not carrying a damn gun. Okay. Um, and sub, subsection of that, bring a gun or hell, bring two. Why would we bring a backup gun? Now, people are very quick to say, you know, in case, you know, your gun has some catastrophic malfunction or runs out of ammo. You know, the cops used to call it a New York reload when they had revolvers because it was faster to draw a second revolver than it was to load the one you had. And um, so, um, uh, you know, so there's several reasons to bring a, another gun, but the one that's most often overlooked is so you can arm somebody else. And so like a wife or a loved one or somebody that has been in the range, knows how to shoot, but maybe they're not a gun carrying person. If something happened, you could hand them that, that second gun, that backup gun, so to speak. You could hand them that gun and they could they could be protected. Like you could say, like, stay in this closet until I come back or, you know, whatever the case may be. So there, there, there are more than just, you know, one reason or two reasons to carry a backup gun. There's several reasons. And, and as far as like, what gun should you carry for a backup gun? I don't really care. And what I mean by that, if you're carrying a quality first gun, you're sec you could say, I'm carrying a North American arms 22 for my, my backup gun. Great. It's, it's another gun. I mean, I'm not really going to say it's got to be this caliber or that caliber or this big or that big. The second gun is free. I wouldn't carry any gun that I didn't want to get in a gunfight with, though. So, keep, you know, keep that in mind. Two, uh, the only thing that will stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And uh, and I'm not saying you got to be a cop or a soldier. I'm saying a good guy, a good person, a good human being. One is brave, one's courageous. That's what stops bad guys with guns. End of story. Uh, number three, only hits count. The only thing worse than a miss is a slow miss. Uh, that's on behalf of Wyatt Earp. Um, and, you know, Wyatt Earp often said, it's not the first shot that counts, it's the first hit. And uh, so what, what that means is I think you should concentrate very strongly on when you go to practice, when you know it's been a week or two weeks or three weeks since you shot your gun, I want you to draw your pistol and pay particular interest to that first shot. Because if that first shot, yank it or whatever the case may be, that's your first shot in a gunfight. And so pay from this day forward, pay particular attention to the first shot you fire when you're training because that will be a mimic of how you will shoot your first real shot. Um, if your shooting stance is good, you're probably not moving fast enough or using cover correctly. Um, if you guys have noticed from all the videos I made and the, you've watched my videos, my DVDs and all that stuff, you notice that I don't use words weaver or isosceles. I don't care. 
don't care. What 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 are you in weaver stance when you're laying on your back? Are you in isosceles when you uh, when you're in kneeling or whatever the case may be? No, um, stance implies that you should be standing somewhere. And the last thing we want you to do is stay still in a gunfight. Remember this acronym: motionless operators ventilate easily. Move your ass. Um, move away from your attacker. Distance is your friend. Um, the closer you are, the more likely you are to get shot, stabbed, beaten, whatever the case may be. So moving should be incorporated into your draw. Uh, a, a step is incorporated into our draw. And, and I don't mean just a step and that's it. I'm saying it begins to push the, the row of dominoes. So every time we draw our pistol, we move one way or the other, left, right, backwards, sometimes forwards. But the movement is part of our draw stroke. And I encourage you to, to incorporate that. Uh, Another rule, rule six, not being shot is more important than shooting a bad guy. Now, people, like if I say, what's, what's the most important thing in a gunfight? Shooting a bad guy or, and I don't even get that out, people go, shooting a bad guy. No, you not being injured is the most important thing. And people lose sight of that. Using cover correctly, not doing stupid shit to get in a gunfight, uh, all, all that matters more than shooting the bad guy. Please keep that in mind. Um, in 10 years, nobody will remember the details of caliber stance or tactics. And uh, <laughs> that may or may not be true, but all that matters is who's alive. That's all that matters, who, who, who's alive. Uh, it's not the great shot that wins the fight, it's all the little mistakes that you don't make. Amateurs practice till they get it right, professionals train until they cannot get it wrong. The difference in sweat equity between practicing until you get something right and training until you can't get it wrong, the difference in that is enormous. Um, um, and all the little mistakes, like guys kind of pass over some of the stuff I tell them in class about, you know, fight, assess, scan, top off, do this, do that, move, whatever. And they just kind of blow it off. It's all that little stuff that adds up to your victory or defeat. So uh, keep in mind uh, <laughs> that, uh, that the, all that all that little stuff matters. Nearly every gunfight will have more people you don't want to shoot than people you do want to shoot. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of, lot of flack from our Dan Range photographer video because I had somebody in front of the firing line taking pictures when people were shooting and, oh, my God, and it was just this, this terrible thing. But, but the reality is, tell me when you're going to get into a gunfight in this perfectly safe environment where there's nothing downrange from you, point in case. Just, just last week, there was a shooting in downtown New York near the Empire State Building, and many, many people on the street were shot. The initial reports that I'm getting is most of those people were accidentally shot by police shooting at the bad guy. I don't know if that's true, but that's the initial reports I'm getting. And, it's not, and that's not to be derogatory to the police, but I'm saying if you don't train with any kind of downrange stress, how do you think you will perform? You won't perform well at all. If you just shoot indiscriminately in this safe area and there's no consequences, there's no recourse, then you're not training yourself well at all. You have to be sure of your target and what is beyond it. And, um, and people just don't get that. So make sure that, you, that you're safe. And, and the way we train in a three-dimensional world with sometimes people in front of the 180 is the only thing that's really training. Anything else is just punching holes in paper. <clears throat> Someday somebody may kill you with your own gun, but they should have to beat you to death with it because it's empty. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is from John Farnham, uh, my friend, my mentor. Train with John Farnham and do it soon. Uh, he is he is uh, he, he's the first commercial firearms instructor. He predates Gunsight. He started in 1972. He's been the longest continu continuous commercial firearms instructor ever in the history of mankind, and uh, the guy knows some stuff. So train with John Farnham, Defense uh, Training International, uh, DTI is his website. Uh, you must decide to be aggressive enough quickly enough. You must decide to be aggressive en enough, quickly enough. And get getting caught flat-footed is one thing, but you have to shift into high gear as quickly as possible. Another one from Farnham. The faster you finish the fight, the less you will get shot. It's just that simple. You know, the, the more time that that guy is allowed to shoot at you, uh, the more op option opportunities that you're going to have to be shot. Uh, one I've said before, uh, another quote from Musashi, uh, warriors should not have a favorite weapon. And, um, and a lot of guys kind of go, oh, but you like Glocks and blah, but so you say you shouldn't have a favorite weapon, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to have my Glock to win a gunfight. I just need a Glock. And that's what Musashi meant is if Musashi had a favorite weapon, the Katana, but he didn't have to have his Katana 
to win a gunfight. Um, 14. All skill is in vain when the angel pisses in the flintlock of your musket. There are going to be days that are just <laughs> things aren't going your way. Stay in the fight. Okay. Uh, 15. Your number one option for personal security is a lifelong commitment to avoidance, deterrence, and de-escalation. Avoidance, deterrence, and de-escalation. De Basically, don't go stupid places with stupid people and do stupid shit. If you gotten this far in your life without going to jail it's probably because either you haven't done those things or you haven't been caught yet if you're doing them stop doing them uh, but uh, if, if you're not doing them great keep living your life right um, 16 your weapon should be hardy and not decorative that's from Musashi I've actually had students get mad because during the course of our class they got a scratch on their gun if you're worried about getting a scratch on your gun tactical response is not the place for you to train um, you're, and I, I, close the, I close it out with this, like I, I close a lot of my, my videos. Your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. You never get a day off from being able to protect yourself. You never get a day off from being able to protect your family, giving yourself the ability to, pr to pr protect your family. I'm James Jaguar, Tactical Response. I appreciate you watching. Please forward, pull forward to the second window.